Remember Starcade? The 80s arcade competition. Check out the video game years clip from, uh, what was it, 1983. show was on 82 to 83. Um, it was a, an arcade competition show. You had either two competitors or two teams answer video game questions and then do challenges, arcade challenges. It was the best video game uh, game show ever. Arguably the best video game show ever, but yeah. Um, Shout Factory bought the rights to create a reboot of the series. Shout Factory are, they used to do, they do, I think they still do like stuff like the Mystery Science Theater 3000 uh, video collection, stuff like that. They like getting into the older stuff and trying to bring it back. I think they might have done anime or like G.I. Joe and like Voltron stuff in the past or Transformers they've come out with, I think. So, um, it was a cool show. Like I said, I don't want to retread a lot of ground. The big, the big thing was the show's uh, second host, Jeff Edwards, was the fucking man. And I even tried... I, it's a shame I never got in touch with him before he passed away, unfortunately. Because... Um, and this, and the reason that this is still well known, because on G4, they used to run reruns of this all the, all the freaking time. They ran reruns of, uh, Starcade. And there is a website that you can even watch most of the old episodes. Um, and on YouTube, I'm sure people up, up, uh, up, upload them. Yeah. Go to Starcade.tv and, um, you click on shows and you have, wow, list of the episodes. I don't think you can watch all of them, but you can watch a chunk of them. I just clicked on episode four. Wizen versus Shaw. Barber Wizen versus Rakesh Shaw. So you have a chunk on here. And how many? There was over 130 episodes. What was cool about the show, I'm not going to totally just uh, say what I said before on the video game years, but it was a mix of, you know, this is still early in video game history, uh, relatively. Where you didn't have video games be just, oh, this is just for kids, or video games are just for boys. You had all r ranges. You had uh, men and women, boys and girls. So remember, arcades in the in the late 70s were still seedy, early, even up to the early 80s. It wasn't until games like Pac-Man, Centipede, more colorful games that could be more family-friendly or, or geared towards kids. Um, then you, had, you brought the kids into it, and then, of course, the merchandising and everything blew up. Until 1980, at least, you know, it wasn't like that with arcades by and large it was more teenagers and older um but they're gonna bring this back i'm fearful of, of what this could look like i'm interested but i'm fearful um just because there the reason i think this show worked so well you had this at least the second host who jeff edwards who did a majority of the of the show who again, I tried, I tried messaging on Facebook and he never got back to me. I wanted to ask him some questions. I, hopefully at least saw that, uh, that message I sent him. You need someone that's enthusiastic about games. Of course, nowadays you can get anyone who's a, a enthusiastic. You can get Jeff Keighley instead of Jeff Edwards to host it and be enthusiastic. But the, the show is set up to look like an arcade. And the arcade is just a social environment that's been lost in video games. It's not the same as having a couch with a, with a, a monitor or a a, or a table with a monitor. Having a living room set up, you can have maybe like four to six people, and have, but you don't have the games being showed off. It's something to be said for having an arcade where you have beautiful arcade cabinets advertising the games clearly while they're also being displayed at the same time. There's no, there's no uh, analogy you have to modern gaming when it comes to arcades. It just doesn't exist. So I'm hoping they would do try to do a setup with that. Maybe you'd have, I don't know, 30 games set up at different PC stations, and you can select each one. Because that'd be cool if you can walk over and say, hey, I want to challenge someone to, I don't know, Halo ODST or whatever. Then you play that. Or, hey, I want to challenge someone to, I don't know, um, uh, what's, what's that? Rocket League. And they play that game. Sort of like a Nick Arcade sort of vibe where they had some games set up along the side. Fillmore's a cool guy, by the way, by the way from Nick Arcade. It's going to be interesting to see what they can do there. Because it's not like you're going to have each PC title have its own arcade cabinet. Will they have that? I don't know. Uh, hopefully the format stays the same where you have trivia. The cool thing about, the cool thing about Starcade that something like Nick Arcade lost out on is that Starcade was purely video games. Not video game knowledge, trivia, and game playing. Something like Nick Arcade cheated. Or even that one that was on uh, syndication, which I always forget. Uh, video power uh, 
those other ones cheated because they would ask you questions uh, or have games or puzzles that had nothing, nothing to do with video games, which always bothered me. I'm going to give Phil more shit for that when I see him at SoCal Retro Gaming Expo in a few weeks. Just kidding. I love Phil more. Phil more. Um, that bothered me. So they have to keep the formula, I think, similar. But then again, you still have the same issue I brought up when I, when I talked about the Conan O'Brien Clueless Gamer show possibly coming to TV. Is there an audience for something like, like a Starcade revival on TV? Is there even an audience? Or are you better off just putting it on YouTube? But then again, you put stuff on YouTube, you don't make that much money to recoup the cost. One of the issues with video game years is that you could not recoup the cost to make the show. Or even think about turning a profit by putting a show like that on YouTube. YouTube is, is best for lower budget or simpler shows put together, not for a TV production style show. It's just not what YouTube is for. You don't have the viewing numbers. You just don't. We'll wait and see. My gut tells me that this they'll get to a pilot stage, but you may never even see this uh, come out. You might you might be you might see something like a uh, maybe you'll see like a uh, Shout Factory uh, Blu-ray box set of Starcade shows from the past uh, or merchandise, etc. Versus seeing this actually get a revival on cable TV.